also um, currently studying an executive master's in business and administration. Jenna can't wait to stick up for North Queensland by supporting our community from the Townsville Bulletin. Jenna's gutsy entrance into her editorial position leaves us anticipating some great out outcomes for our region. So can we please welcome Jenna? Thanks very much, Trish. Just to clarify, I'm not on the pickup. I'm, I'm married with a young child. Um, good morning, Townsville, uh, and welcome to this morning's Leaders Debate. Uh, my name's Jenna Kearney. I'm the new editor of the Townsville Bulletin. I have a strong accent. It's Scottish. Robbie Catter's told me, though, he's been watching Outlander for the past few weeks, so he's, he's going to be okay with the questions. Um, I also have uh, Townsville Bulletin Deputy Editor Damien Tomlinson here if we need any translations. Um, still working on some of those place names. Um, some of you might have attended the candidates debate that we had in this very spot last week. 18 local candidates uh, braved uh, the Townsville crowd and that was quite a challenge. They were all very well behaved um, and hopefully today with just three it'll be a walk in the park. I've only been in town for uh, a week and three days, but I have heard loud lines on who they're going to be. After watching the Sky Leaders debate in Brisbane, it became apparent uh, that in the forefront of our leaders' mind was North Queensland. But that crowd was a well-heeled Brisbane crowd, and I don't believe that they sent the message to our leaders loud enough as to the, the key issues for, for our region. And that's why it was so important for us to have our leaders here today. I'm proud to live in a state where elections are fought and won in, in regional areas. Now there's no point in beating about the bush. There's one key person who is missing from today's, day, today's debate and that is the Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk. I'm further disappointed to say that the three local Labour candidates have not come to today's debate. They were all last minute apologies. We're thankful to the other leaders who have made the time today to face the voters of Townsville. Our local seats are all in play and it's going to be a battle to the finish. And I really hope to those of you uh, who have, have attended today will help make up your mind um, who to vote for um, on Saturday. Look, the format of this morning will be as follows. In a couple of minutes I'll invite the leaders to the stage. They'll uh, be allowed to give a two minute speech. Guys, I have a cowbell and I'm not afraid to use it. Oh, hang on. Let's have a practice. Okay? We've, we have to keep it fair. We have to keep to time. We've got a lot of questions to get through today, so I will cut you off at two minutes sharp. We'll then move into the main event, which is the questions. Um, I've got some pre-prepared questions from TEL, uh, TEL members and from our readers. Um, we'll take some questions from the floor that hopefully you've had a chance to pre-submit to, to Damien. Um, look, we'll, we'll allow two minutes to answer a question, but candidates, I will interrupt if you waffle, I will interrupt if you get off point, um, because I want to allow some debate and, and we want answers. We'll conclude with a two minute closing statement from each leader, um, and uh, then that will conclude the event. We have all the media here, hello folks, I hope you're having a fun time. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be filming, of course. And we have this whole event uh, uh, streaming live, so uh, it'll be on the Townsville Bulletin website, the Cairns Post, the Mackay Mercury and the Rockhampton Bulletin. Uh, a warm welcome to the three of the four party leaders to the stage. We have the leader of the LNP, Tim Nichols, uh, leader of Polly Nat Hansen, One Nation, Steve Dixon, and the leader of the Catter Australia Party, Robbie Catter. Welcome. <laughs> We didn't have uh, we didn't have any uh, knowledge prior knowledge that Anastasia was going to come to the debate today. We, we might have to ask her to leave the stage, Tim Nichols. No, no trouble whatsoever. She hasn't been here anyway, so it's no problem when she goes. Thanks. Look, let's get straight into it. Two-minute speeches, and we'll start. Uh, 
with the, the leader of uh, Pauline Hanson One Nation, Steve Dixon. Two minutes start now. Uh, thanks, Jenna, and thank you, Townsville Enterprises, all candidates here today. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming along, and I've got to recognise some people, Malcolm Charleston, Munningborough, Mark Thompson, Alan Evans, and also Margaret Bell and Sam Cox. So thank you for coming along. These are the people who can make a real difference in North Queensland leading into this election. We all know that the two major parties have absolutely lost their way. That is right across the state of Queensland. We've got an opportunity to change this state for the better and change Townsville for the better for our kids, for our grandchildren. We've got some plans. We're going to reallocate the Cross River Rail money from down in Brisbane. It's $5.4 billion. I'm not saying it. Infrastructure, is saying, infrastructure of South Australia is saying it's not needed yet. We want to spend $1.95 billion building dams and weirs from Townsville down to Rockhampton. We're also going to spend one we're committing to that, and we expect the federal government to match that dollar for dollar. We're putting and living within our means of the Queensland budget. We've actually thrown on the table, and I'll talk about it later this morning, how we're going to go about it. Reallocating that cross, we've been saying it for months, the opportunities here right now for our future to be better, because it's time the grown-ups walked into the room and took charge of the Queensland government. Hasn't happened for the past 20 years. They've had their go, and they've let us down. Now's our chance to make Queensland the power state, to make Queensland and to make Townsville the place we can be proud to live in and make it prosperous all over again. That's what One Nation is all about. We want to create the balance of power in this state so that we can look after your interest. And by voting for those members that I spoke about earlier, that will lead you forward. Thank you. Thank you, Steve Dixon. OK, we'll now uh, hear from the Queensland Catter Australia Party leader, Robbie Catter. Thanks, Robbie. Thanks. Um, just make reference to Trisha Callaghan. We produce a lot of great things out in Mount Eyes that Townsville gets the benefit of, of and Trisha Callaghan's one of them. <laughs> But, um, that's a good segue into what I want to say because I think um, you know there are some big problems here, and um, you know civic leaders do a good job of uh, trying to keep uh, spirits up and keep the economy going. But there's some re really big fundamental issues. The rail hasn't been talked about nearly enough. Um, you know, in energy, as we uh, you know, spoke about there, the, these are big issues and uh, very serious. There's a cost associated with them, particularly the energy, and um, they, they're not dealt with seriously enough. And uh, the rail alone, um, I hardly heard a word of it uh, from the two majors. So the, the 50 million from the Labor government will just make things worse um, out on that line at the moment. It shows they don't know what they're talking about with it. So, um, and, and that's a big problem for Townsville with the rail because uh, you know people talking about the Tennant Creek rail line. Um, well, we need to get this one right first. And uh, we, we're very uh, intrinsically linked. And the things that we feel very strongly about in the KAP as, is industry and industry infrastructure first. We believe in infrastructure for, for prosperity before infrastructure for convenience. And I think that's a relevant topic because we've had there's about $7 billion worth of commitments for Brisbane and the Cross River Rail and the new entertainment precinct in, in South Bank. That's for a population of say 1.2 million. We've got a population of a million up here. And I think um, you know if you throw in the stadium, there's there's uh, you know infrastructure means what's that 300 million. So obviously there's disparity, but I don't believe in those sort of uh, projects before we fix up the right things. So fix up in the energy that would be a cost to the government, but quite frankly the money uh, saved from um, getting rid of that profit margin the government take from our energy assets and putting that back in the pockets of the homeowners and the businesses. I think businesses and homeowners will do a better job with that money than the government does when they spend you know, on office buildings or traffic tunnels and, and infrastructure of convenience. I don't think that's a good way to spend that money. And, um, and I don't think uh, that's, the majors are capable of, of doing that. There's too many things in the way Thanks, Robbie. Thank you very much. Sorry to cut you off. Um, and we'll hear from the Leader of the Opposition now, Tim Nichols. Two minutes. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Gemma. And can I say what a pleasure it is to be back in Townsville, Gemma. As an almost local, I welcome you here. So it's uh, terrific to see you here at the helm of the Townsville Bulletin. I want to talk about my vision for Queensland. I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I came here as a 12-year-old boy. Oh, yeah, well, I'm sorry, Tim. Oh, if you could stop this one there. Oh, Security, oh, ladies. Oh, 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 Clearly. Oh, I see you go again. Oh, I'm oh, 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 There's 70,000 jobs in the ring. How do you fix that? Stop your up and army. How do you fix the ring? How do you fix the ring? I don't I don't think they're locals. I think they 
to be. I'm sorry, Ted, please start. All I can say is how rude. How rude can they be? Look, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, who I am. I came up in here as a 12 year old. My mum and dad took a risk. Dad was a small businessman and he was given the opportunity to buy into a dealership, a car dealership, a Ford dealership. Uh, and he moved up here. We didn't know anyone up here. But Queensland in the late 70s was a state where you had an opportunity where if you backed yourself, if you took a risk, you would be the author of your own success. It was up to you. It wasn't uh, the government that was going to overtax you. It wasn't the government that was going to uh, overrule you with too much red tape. Queensland was a state of opportunity and a state of hope throughout this state. And even here where we are today at the Ville, uh, a project that was built, Queensland had big ideas where we backed ourselves, where we grew the state, where we took a risk and where we had rewards for that risk. And my sisters and I grew up here and we've had a terrific life here. We've been blessed with the opportunity that Queensland offers. I've married a local girl, she's here with me today in the audience. We've got three kids. I've educated them, one's at uni, one's at schoolies. I hope he's still safe, we're not hearing a lot from him. And we've got one, and we've got, got one in grade nine going to grade 10. So my vision for the whole state, including the North, is that we have a state of opportunity, a state of reward, a state where initiative is prized, a state where if you back yourself and take a risk, you will be the one who determines your success, not a government where we have a government that provides the pathways for success. A hand up, not a hand out. That's my vision for Queensland, and I think that's the spirit of Queensland, and that's the spirit of Queensland that an LNP government that I lead with people like Deb Frecklington and Andrew Cripps and Dale Last and Casey and Nick and Matt will deliver. Thank you very much. Now we move on to the meaty bit. Uh, as I said before, questions have been pre-submitted to Townsville Enterprise and um, from our Townsville Bulletin readers. Can I, time permitting, I'll allow for some debate. Two minutes per uh, answer, but of course two minutes is a long time. Uh, so if you can finish before that, even better. We can ask some more questions and we can allow for some, some debate between you. Um, I'll, I will interrupt waffling um, and I'll, inter I'll invite you to speak time permitting again. I know we can all get a little bit excited, um, but I, I trust you guys are experienced enough that I don't need to tell you not to talk over each other. It's just pointless. We can't, we can't hear you. Um, we've got a lot of ground to cover, um, so I'll move on um, from questions when, when we need to. Um, and we'll also hand over to Damien um, for, for questions on the floor. So if you haven't made your way to Damien yet, please uh, quietly sneak over and get in his ear. Um, Look, it's, it's been mentioned already a couple of times in, in the candidate speeches, but I do want to start by talking about rail. Um, Tim Nichols, the Mount Isa to Townsville rail line is a nationally recognised Queensland state asset that we don't believe is operating to its full potential. What would an LNP government do to address this issue? Uh, well, you right, Gina. Um, what we would uh, start doing straight away is uh, looking at where the improvements need to be made on that railway line to increase the speed of travel. Uh, and uh, the reliability of travel because I think it's an average travel time of around about 35 kilometres an hour. It's simply not being utilised to its full potential because it does not meet the needs of industry shipping product from the northwest minerals province to the port of Townsville. Uh, Robbie mentioned a moment ago that uh, 2010 and 2011 to upgrade points and overtaking lanes, none of those have actually been uh, effectively delivered that has improved it. Uh, the Queensland Productivity Commission uh, would be the ideal people to be able to identify where the improvements can uh, be made. I think the other thing though that uh, we're talking about in that Northwest Minerals Promise, Jenna, is putting $5 million into the development of a super pit there at Mount Isa. This has been something that's been spoken about. Uh, we need to look at how we can extend the life of the Mount Isa mine so that we can extend uh, the uh, job opportunities, certainly out there in uh, Robbie's part of the world, and to grow the size of the pie so that we can actually have more product to get onto the train to get to market. So just in a couple of words, Tim, so the LNP, what would it do for that, that rail line? Well, we prefer uh, the, the question of the rail line and its operation 
uh, through to the Queensland Productivity Commission to give us the recommendations together with Building Queensland on the best way of improving the speeds and reliability of that railway line. Because it's around, uh, I think uh, it's around about a $300 million cost to upgrade. So no funding commitments for that Not at this now. time, no. Yeah. Robbie, uh, pass over to you. Like the, the ANT and Queensland governments are, are doing feasibility studies from for the rail line from my eyes at the port of Darwin. That's a huge concern for the people of Townsville and surrounds. What's your position on this and how would you address the issue of the yeah. my eyes at the port? Well, it's probably, I'm at a big advantage on this question because obviously I've seen my patch and, and um, you know, I should really be talking with the uh, team and the LMP because uh, they've made no commitment and, and this is a real big thing that needs to be addressed and, and everyone's missing the point with it. Um, the speeds and the maintenance is an issue, but the price is, goes always back on the user. So every time I thought it's been a good MP getting, I think we've got 37 million in maintenance, but the, the mines would say, Rob, stop asking for maintenance because it just jacks the price up. I mean, we're already putting trucks on the road because the price is too high. So the 50 million that's been announced by the Premier is just going to put more trucks on the road. It's counterintuitive, it's exactly, and, and you know, I've been telling the government this for two or three years what the problems are, so they haven't listened. They'll refer back to the Queensland Competition Authority, which sets the guidelines of Queensland Rail. You don't even let you backload in some instances. The regulations and the pricing is not commercial. It needs to all be thrown into the bin and they need to redo uh, how they run that line. And one thing a lot of you don't know out there is that that line is one of the only pieces of track in Queensland that's not subsidised. That is, all the costs, and I think they load up probably 10 levels of office space in Queensland and Brisbane onto the cost of that line, goes back onto the users. So that's why the trucks are on the road because uh, we have to, you know, us, towns on the Mount Isa, we're paying to maintain that road. Our industry is when uh, all the rest of the track is subsidised by Queensland taxpayers. How significant is the threat from, um, to this area for the, the Mount Isa to import a Darwin suggestion? Well, one way I'd say it is ridiculous that you're talking about, I don't know what the business case is for that rail line because unless there's an amount of mines that's going to open up, I, I don't know how it costs, it makes sense. But, but the fact that they're even talking about it reflects terribly on the government for the last 20 years. I mean, both sides had to go up, um, you know, should have had to go up fixing this and have been aware of the problems and nothing's been done. So um, I think it's symptomatic of how we've been forgetting, forgotten up in the north. Um, it's not that people want to work against us, but they're just not interested in some of these issues. So they're just not at the forefront and they need to be dealt with. And these are absolute fundamental issues like electricity that we want to have the chance to drive. Thanks. Steve Dixon, uh, similar question to you. Where does your party stand on the Mount Isa to Townsville rail line and um, are there any election commitments in that space? Jenny, I, I thank you very much for the question. I think most of it's been covered. I think we need to realise a couple of things. If you ever privatise anything, things are going to get more expensive. I think this gets down to our belief. We believe the Queensland Government should own and operate essential services and I think we've lost our way. And particularly relating to this rail line, I am very much aware that it's become more commercially viable to transport by truck than it is by rail because the costs have gone through the roof. Uh, we are very happy to look at this, but I think mistakes have been made in the past. We cannot afford to make any more mistakes, such as privatising electricity, privatising water, and I think they're the traps that the governments are slowly falling into, selling us out to multinationals. Things will not get cheaper. I come from private enterprise. It is all about making a profit, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when it gets down to government and essential services, we need to get it right, and we've got it wrong with rail so far. Okay, thanks very much. Look, moving on, uh, Robbie, I'll ask this question of you, and it's a question from uh, one of Townsville Enterprise's emerging leaders. Um, Maddie Smith owns Oliver Brown Belgian Chocolate Cafe, which is a small coffee shop uh, which has an electricity bill of $16,000 to $18,000 a quarter. Can that be right? $16,000 a quarter for a coffee shop. That's a hell of a lot of coffees Maddie's got to sell. Power prices are a huge issue across the state and nowhere more so than in Townsville. Our local businesses want to know what government will do in both the short and the long term to address these issues. Yeah, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a technical exercise to get cut through um, exactly where all the prices are, whether you're talking about competitive neutrality fee or the regulated asset <coughs> valuation model, but basically, in essence, the government created, and it was uh, whoever the bean counters were for the government, 10, 15 years ago when they wanted to privatise everything and they were very clever and mischievous and they learned a way to rip people off with their power bills and we created this theoretical model of pricing that doesn't need to be there, that, that doesn't, no longer relates to the cost. The power needs to go back to the cost and that's going to be a cost to the government, whoever it is of the day, but like I said before, that money's better in the back pockets of businesses 
and homeowners and will do a better job in the economy than governments have. Um, and, uh, and it's absolutely essential because, uh, you know, everyone's telling you now if, if it's not holding their business back, it's going to destroy their business and lead it away. So it's come to a point where, um, you know, government's got to get their greedy hands off those power bills and put that money back in. And, um, you know, if you want to put a name to it, it's the regulated asset valuation. In fact, the LMBs, uh, I don't entirely disagree with. I think they've made a start on that. It just needs to go further on, on terms of the regulated asset valuation that's there because it's all theoretical pricing model that doesn't need to be there. And it, um, our policy is it should go back to cost, which you know can represent a saving in five hundred to thousand dollars um, on the average price, and, and absolutely essential that it happens. And it's a big thing, and it'd be very hard to deliver um, from a, in a balance of power or any government. more expensive rail. The maintenance has gone to rubbish. We've got no workers left along that line. That's a privatisation, in my view, has offered us. So if it's good, in some cases, good. But I don't see where it's passed the test, and particularly up here when they have monopoly. Um, so debt can be good. Um, you know, we don't need to sell a lot of our assets, and, and most of the ones I know we don't need to. I'm open to the discussion, but I just don't see where it's a good move. And um, and stop spending money down south, and it really cuts that north-south divide. Stop spending seven billion dollars down Thanks, there when we've got jobs. Thanks, Thanks. Devin. One more quick question from uh, from your lot, if that's all right. Yes, I'm going to just text you. Um, there's a, a plan for a uh, a serious battery manufacturing plant here in Townsville, just south of us, Woodstock. Um, we're very excited about it. Obviously, renewables are an exciting emerging industry for us. Um, Labor has committed 3.1 million uh, for that, which uh, the, the overall development is expected to create up to 900 jobs. Um, Tim, will you match that? Uh, anything that's already in the budget that's committed to, we will match and we will continue to support. So uh, that will be our cash statement. Yep. Well, that's been announced during this campaign, though, so probably not the budget. Sorry? I think that's been announced during this I think it's coming out of the Advanced Queensland Fund, and that Advanced Queensland Fund is in the budget, so that. Could you please raise your hand if you support the Adani mine? Um, Jenna, that's a much better response than I got at the Sky News debate. Let me tell you that. And if you let me finish, can I ask you to please raise your hand if you support the government loan for the building of the rail link? Okay, thank you. Steve Dixon, your party doesn't support the loan for the building of this rail link. Please explain why and, and what would your party do to ensure that that... The state government, so the first question is academic. It gets down to what's going to happen with $1 billion up to $600 million a year. And it's not just the Carmichael mine, it is all the associated mines in here. Why can't we build schools? Why can't Senator Hanson is 100% supporting this? We want to see it happen, but we want Queensland and Australians to own that line, not an overseas multinational company. Robbie Carter, I'll take some comments from you on the, the issue. I'll, I'll briefly have my answer. It's Steve, I share the same sentiment. We said that for the last three years. That, um, and I go talk to Quick Twiggy Forest and talk about the iron ore, the rail line owned by BHP over there. Um, the Galilee Basin is a lot more done, and we desperately want to see the Carmichael mine go ahead. And um, But um, it's got to be done properly and for the future, and we don't want to lock the other users out. And um, you know, it's already spoken by the other users that can't get access at the moment. And under those terms and conditions, people of Queensland need to own that rail line. Why would you spend six billion on the rail line, 12 kilometres of it? And, in Brisbane, we can own uh, 200, 170 kilometres or whatever it is there for two or three billion. Tim, uh, the LNP government will support the concessional loan. Uh, I suppose the concern, plain devil's advocate, is that allowing Adani to operate and own that rail line could hurt the prospects of opening up the Galilee. Can you can you discuss that? Sure, Jenna. Well, there's one party that has consistently supported the car market. There's one party that has consistently supported the rail line. There's one party that facilitated the acquisition of the land on fair terms, and that is the LNP. We have been steadfast, unwavering, and rock solid in supporting Carmichael and the rail line because of the 10,000 jobs uh, that it brings to regional Queensland. The jobs here in Townsville, uh, the jobs in Rocky, the jobs throughout the region. We have been steadfast, both in government and opposition. All the other parties have had more positions on it uh, and different views on it than you can count. We have been rock solid supporting jobs in North Queensland with it. Uh, in terms of uh, the rail line itself, uh, that will be a regulated asset. So it will be controlled by the Queensland Competition Authority who will set the terms of access onto that rail line. And in fact, part of the deal 
is that it must be made available to other mines as they come on board and it must be made available to other users of the rail line as it comes on board. Uh, so this idea that it can't be used by anyone else or it won't be used by anyone else is a complete furphy. Uh, it has to be open as part of the deal that, and the approvals that are in place and it's a regulated asset that can be able to be opened up to provide other users to do it. And Gemma, just let me just say in terms of financial responsibility, um, I did a quick tally of One Nation's commitments and they currently total just under $18 billion. $18 billion. Now, uh, Mr Dixon is talking about um, the Cross River Rail in Brisbane and it's a project that we don't believe has been justified or put in place and it's a labour pet project. But there's only two and a half billion dollars in the budget for it. So there's not a four and a half billion dollar miracle amount of money in that budget that's going to pay for it all. We've got 18 billion dollars, 18 billion dollars worth of commitments and we've got no way of seeing them paid for. Steve, would you like to respond to that and then we'll pass to Robbie. Absolutely, Jenna, I thank you very much for that. Well, I understand the LNP and the Labor Party both voted for the Cross River Rail project as well as increasing fees and charges. No, you're wrong. Renewable energy you're targets. wrong. That was in the last budget. I was there, Robbie was there, and we voted against it. They voted for it. <laughs> Robbie. Uh, yeah, I, I just I disagree with Tim on the, the regulation, uh, you know, the uh, pro protocols that the government puts in place over those lines. It is there, but I just don't believe in the value of it. Talk to Twiggy Forest and WA how that worked out for them. Um, but uh, I don't think anyone seriously believes it. And if you talk to other users trying to get on that line, um, I think it, I think we need to be upfront with people and understand that that will lock other users out, allowing one user out the line. But we desperately need that cut on the mind, and, and that's been our position forever. Tim, um, if you're brief, I'll allow you to Sure. Uh, Robbie talks about Twiggy Forest. Twiggy Forest built, owns, and operates a private rail line. No, after his one there. Okay. He, he runs his own private rail line, mate. Okay, candidates, we're going to move on. Uh, Robbie Catter, the Museum of Underwater Art is a project that will change the face of tourism and the visitor market in North Queensland, Times Will Enterprise believes. Can you state your party's position on the project? Uh, yep, so Trish was hounding me on this one, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, I spoke to Nick Dometo over there about it, who owns the you know, water business here, so he definitely understands um, the value of that sort of thing for the businesses in Townsville. So, um, you know, and, and you know, like Tim's saying, it's easy for everyone to make promises before the election. It sounds like a great idea, and I think uh, it'd be something we definitely wouldn't be opposed to, but I qualify everything by saying we need to do the, to get the, the, the big things right first. If we need to get infrastructure, uh, and industry enabling infrastructure right, then we can pay for everything else. So, I don't think it's a priority, but I think it's a good project, and I'm happy to see it go ahead. Okay, great. Look, I'll, I'll ask really briefly the question of the other two candidates as well for the, in the interest of the Times Enterprise. Steve, do you know about the project and does it have your party's support? Jenna, I, I think it's a worthy project, but it gets down to prioritisation. Uh, Senator Hanson just come up here recently. Not a priority? I'm just, I'm going to cut you off there. If that's, that's all good. I, I think, a, a, I think we have to prioritise with electricity, yep. water and those things. Same question. I think, I think Rob makes, makes a fair point. I've spoken to Patricia and um, I understand the need. We, we're very happy to have that discussion. Uh, and I would just raise the point that Trish made in her opening address. I suppose <coughs> the frustration of the people in the north is the fact that we are begging for very basic infrastructure. There's road, rail, power, and these sorts of projects are the projects that can't be realised. That's my uh, little comment. Um, Tim, uh, security of payment is one of the most important issues for the building and construction industries. Do you support the planned review of the building industry fairness legislation? particularly project bank accounts? Uh, yes, in fact, it was one of the uh, changes that we wanted to see to the legislation. So these people who do the work deserve to be paid for the work they do at the time that they do it. They don't deserve to be used as cheap sources of finance uh, for unscrupulous operators. There are plenty of good builders out there, I know them, and they take pride in paying their subbies on time and when they're due because it keeps, keeps a reliable and dedicated workforce available to them. So they deserve to be paid. Uh, the project bank accounts add a lot of complexity and a lot of cost and a lot of red tape and so our commitment was to support the legislation and to review it and its effectiveness after 12 months. That was our suggestion and our amendments uh, and we remain committed to doing that. Are there any contrary beliefs from the other candidates on the issue of the subbies? Uh, Jenna, I think we need to see how it lands. Uh, I actually supported it in Parliament as a board parliamentarian did that we were affected on the Sunshine Coast with Bolton's development and people were crucified. We've got to make sure that builders are no longer <laughs> those that are the heart and soul of our community and we'll back them up every day. So see how it lands. If we need to amend it, we'll amend it to make it better for those building contractors. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Okay, I'll, I'll move on to, the, to another, uh, another issue. So let's keep this as short and painless as we can, okay? Steve Dixon, you've come out this week and you've said that you'll work with whoever is in government, correct? One Nation will work with them. Tim, after an awkward showdown in Sky, you've landed that you would work with One Nation if, if that's the card, the, the hand you're dealt. Well, Jenna, we're going in this to win it, and we want to win uh, because that's the only way we'll be able to deliver the change that Queenslanders need. 16,500 jobs from our $2.7 billion infrastructure program, the cheaper power, $160 off your household power bill, the car yeah. retro freeze. Let's not go through it again. All Please of those, keep it simple for me. All of those things. All of those things. All of those things. All of those things. All of those things you get if you get a majority LNP government. But I won't pull the wool over people's eyes. Thank I'm not going to lie to them. The people have the right to make a decision. I would never take that away from them. I'm not going to send them back and say vote and vote and vote again like the Labor Party has. Our responsibility is to work with the parliament the people elects, and that's what I'll do. Robbie. I think it's a good question, given that Labor didn't turn up today, because I suspect one of the strategies was put these guys together and show how messy it looks in parliament if you don't, no one gets a majority. And, and I really reject that view, and I reject the view that you need stable government and, and a majority to govern. Tim um, and his party got four of their bills, four private member bills out of 14 in history, because uh, we could work with them through the parliament to uh, make things happen, so we're happy to work with other sides. Um, we got two private members' bills through. The Labor government got a lot of their agenda through um, in this parliament. So uh, I think uh, parliament definitely needs a shake up. We don't have an upper house. I think there's a strong need for a crossbench, and, and we'll work with anyone. We're very focused on North Queensland, and um, and we're going to present a, you know, a set of um, priorities for us, and, and we hope we can get alignment with Would you work with Labor again? Work with anyone. Um, you know, and, and if I told, if I had a preconceived idea, it wouldn't be a negotiation if you were going into Parliament. If, um, but what, what would it take? What, what, what would you be putting on the table and say, this is, these are the conditions under which I will work? Well, we've partner. been rolling out our priorities the last couple of weeks of the campaign. I can go through a lot of them now if you Give want. Give me three. Uh, well, energy pricing is yeah. one that's uh, essential. Um, uh, the Galway Basin and um, our policy on the Galway Basin to make sure that's um, unlocked and that we have a, a railway in there. And the um, and, and there's one that escapes from the other, the Hell's Gate uh, Dam is another proposal that needs to be built. Thanks very much. Steve, are we to expect a repeat of 1998 where a gaggle of One Nation candidates were elected only to quit the party and to sit as independents shortly later? That's a concern. Are, are all these One Nation candidates going to just jump <coughs> ship straight after the election? Uh, two answers. Firstly, we'll work with every party. We saw that with Joe Miller yesterday. And I didn't get asked that question. We'll work with anybody standing up here. Relating to the comment you made about 1998, that was actually last century. We're now in 2017. <laughs> I've actually vetted a whole lot of these candidates that have come through. We've got Sam Cox in the room. We've got a number of people here, professional people, accountants, clearance divers, you name it, they come from the real world. They've worked hard, they've paid taxes, and they know that this state needs to be fixed up. So I will back every single one of them. They're very good people. And if you elect them to the parliament, they're going to do you very proud. Now I would ask the question if we had a, Labour's, a Labour candidate here, should a Greens candidate be elected, whether it would form government with the Greens and what that might mean for a Danny, but unfortunately I can't ask that you question. Bet, you, bet, you bet they would. Okay, you bet moving they would. on, moving on. <laughs> Steve Dixon, where do you see the future of the taxi industry? Um, there's obviously big concerns about the impact of Uber. Do you endorse a fair and equitable licence compensation payment? Uh, Jenna, very straightforward. We've come out very hard. We want a level playing field in Queensland. When you give over 3,000 licences to people, it's like Willy Wonka's golden ticket. You will guarantee an outcome. What the government have done and the LNP supported the government to take those livelihoods away, we will not stand for that happening to people. Rideshare companies have to be treated exactly the same. Same comprehensive insurance, same cameras in the cars, exactly a level playing field. We'll back the taxi industry to the death. Absolutely in gold. And the other two issues that we support are dropping electricity costs and building a coal fired power station and reallocating the Cross River Rail money to look after North Queensland. Thanks. I'll take two, two more questions from the floor, Damien, if, if you've got some questions prepared. And if we're running short on time, so short and sharp chats. Thanks, guys. Uh, obviously, the north and the southeast are very different places. Um, down there, I'm sure Tim, you get a lot of curry about your support for the Adani project. Um, how do you play us both off against each other in that respect? Where down there, there are obviously real concerns that we don't share up here. Is it just that we're getting different Kool-Aid? <laughs> 
No, David, um, I've said this consistently. Um, as, as a Premier of this state, if I'm fortunate enough to be supported, and my team fortunate enough to be supported on the 25th of November, I need to govern for the whole state. I believe the whole state is better when we are all doing better. From Karaman to Cape York, from Brisbane to Baduri, we need to be doing better. I don't think Brisbane does well if Townsville's not doing well. I don't believe that Sunshine Coast is doing well if Rockhampton's doing poorly. I want to be a, a, a Premier that leads a team for the whole state with strong people who stand up and who face the music, who don't come, who don't do the, what we've seen Labor do this morning, which is duck the hard questions by not turning up. We've got a plan for North Queensland. We believe in local solutions to local problems. $225 million to support Townsville's water supply problems. We're putting more money into the Bruce Highway. A new coal-fired power station up here, uh, together with a raft of promises from supporting the VMR at Tully to making sure we do road upgrades here. I believe in the regions. I love Queensland, I love the whole state, and we need to be a state that comes together as a whole to deliver because we all benefit when, when the whole state is doing well. And uh, I have been adamant in that. And so I'll go back to Clayfield and I will stand up for jobs in North Queensland and you won't see me flip flop around with three different positions in 36 hours on supporting jobs in regional <coughs> Queensland. I will be steadfast and a friend and a supporter of North Queensland, as I always have been. Thank you. To the other two guys, uh, obviously your support base is strongest in the regions and especially in the north. Um, do you accept that an LNP government, should it form, uh, would have the north's best interests at heart? Like that first. Um, they probably ask the question of people, they think they're happy with government in the last 20 years, do they feel like they've been looked after or do they feel satisfied that you know enough money comes from here and, and that we can actually break the nexus of you know the majority of seats are in the reside in the southeast corner and, and, and close to areas close by. I mean, I would say absolutely unequivocally no. There is we we have got no chance, and, and um, I feel very passionately about um, you know we're the only party with the head office here in North Queensland. We really want to focus our energies here. Uh, we, we don't want to get rid of Liberal or Labor, but we all have a place in the Parliament, but we need a uh, champion up here and we're trying to build that base because we're desperate to make these things happen. This part is a conduit for us to try and make things happen here in North Queensland. And, um, and, and you know, if you say about the North-South thing, like, it, it's not the burning issue up here, I mean, but the crocodile thing, like, such a simple thing to deal with. We've got crocodiles in our nets. We just want to get rid of them. For 12 months, we, we put a bill in the parliament, it gets voted down to fast track it. We, no, no one would have voted for our quality. We just want to fix these things. If that was down in Brisbane, it'd be dealt with within a couple of months. And, and I, get, I love referring to that as an issue because it, you cannot demonstrate better that north-south divide where they think you're lunatics and they say, oh, you just want to cull. We don't want to cull, we just want to deal with the issue properly. And uh, I de there definitely is a divide and that's obviously the last part of why we exist as a, as a party. I believe both major parties have absolutely lost their way in this state. This is a world phenomenon. Political, major political parties have left the people behind. They've deserted Queenslanders and they've deserted Townsville. We put it very clearly on the table. We're backing stage one and two of the water infrastructure here in Townsville by reallocating that money from Cross River Rail. And for the two major parties to say the money's not there, I don't know why they voted on it in the budget. So I think the Liberal the opposition actually got that wrong. But another policy we're dropping right here today is we want to make sure that there is a district commissioner here in Queensland to look after law and order. We will allocate 50 police here in town and we're going to make sure that the police academy is not sold off because one of the major parties is not being quite honest, they're looking to do that. We're going to make sure that people have offended crimes here that are not let out on bail again. They will go before the court. Law and order is a big issue in this town and we're there for energy, we're there for water. We've costed all of our funding and I absolutely reject the leader of the opposition. Let's see their expenditure on the table. I want to see if we're living within Queensland means. And when I say cut the clock the fit, I know what it means to be in business. I know what it's like to borrow money. I don't think some others may. Thanks, mate. Thank, thanks very much. I do oh, have sorry, to. I'm sorry, I got, I got oh, a little bit of 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 a rapid action squad in Cairns, a new helicopter based here in Townsville for police to crack down on the crims, uh, putting the community ahead of the crims, 
tougher laws to stop the revolving door of justice. I see in the paper this morning, 50 brake enders and 12 vehicles stolen, I think on Monday night, and this government's been doing nothing about it. We've got a plan to do it. More and better equipment for our police officers, iPads, iPhones, and more police for our counter-terrorism squad as well, as well as tough laws that actually force the magistrates to deal with the criminals rather than uh, slap them on the wrist uh, and send them out again and hooning off as well. So a comprehensive policy. We've heard that people are frustrated. We get it. And our policies actually address those frustrations together with cheaper power, and that equates to more jobs here in North Queensland. Thanks Thank you very much. much. You probably delivered your closing speech, Tim, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> do we get to hear it all over again? Look, it's time to move to the closing speech as the candidates are once again invited to speak for two minutes uninterrupted, apart from when my cowbell rings. Tim Nichols, Leader of the Opposition, ready, steady, go. Terrific. Well, I started off this campaign talking about hope and optimism. I started off saying that I wanted to build a better Queensland. I wanted to reignite that frontier spirit that I believe in, that brought my family here, and that I believe has brought so many Queenslanders here and led them to invest and to back themselves. Um, if people want change, if they want change to help them and their families get ahead, if you want cheaper power, if you want to target 500,000 jobs over the next 10 years, and if you want to see investment in infrastructure to create 16,500 jobs, if you want to see local solutions to local problems, if you want to see safe and livable communities, uh, and if you want to create stronger families, then the LMP has the policies and we have the candidates and the MPs to be able to deliver to you. We've released more than 100 policies. Go onto our website, betterqueensland.org.au, and have a look at them. And then go onto the Labor website, and you'll see 14. Our policies address issues that are important to Queenslanders, whether it is half-price driver licences for seniors, whether it is free swing, uh, vouchers for free swing lessons for kids, free hearing tests for 50,000 children going to prep school, or whether it is building the roads, the bridges, and the dams we need the LNP has put in place the policies that will see you and your families get ahead, have a better chance of getting a job, holding on to that job and getting cheaper power prices. It's the LNP that can deliver and build a better Queensland for all of us. Thank you. Robbie Cutter. So I think I'd start uh, my final uh, words by saying there definitely is a divide and, uh, uh, and we do get forgotten. And, uh, I'm not sure it's deliberate or not, but we, we stand to uh, fill that gap and fill that void in politics and, and create that tension so that we can deliver things in the north, I think in the KAP. I, I'm really proud of the job we did in the last parliament, trying to work with um, the Labor government and, um, when, and Peter Wellington gave them their vote and we still had an opportunity to procure some things from that government. We delivered um, the ethanol mandate for the first time in Queensland's history and had four attempts before that in parliament. And, uh, and you know, we, uh, delivered, we were part of the sugar bill, and that was our sugar bill to get through, help save the sugar industry. Uh, we did a $79 million drought assistance package. Um, you know, there were some great things we delivered uh, and with the tension we created, but we worked with uh, the LNP, we worked with Labor where we could uh, to, to uh, make sure the parliament still functioned, I think. Um, if people are happy with the things up here and the way the political system's running, fine, go ahead, go for the majors. We're offering an alternative and a strong voice for North Queensland. Nick DeMetto and Mike Abraham and Terry Fox up here, and we think we can do a really good job and fill a gap that's been left there and, and to be a strong voice for the North. There's some really big things that need to be dealt with. We're, you know, we've hardly even seen the rail talked about um, by the major parties, except for the one room one that the Labor did with 50 million. So there's some, um, you know, some big issues we need to deal with, the transmission line, these sort of things. We can do great things in the North, but you need a strong voice and, and to do that. You need to know the issues. You need to be amongst it, live amongst it, and I think uh, we're in a great position to do that. Thank you very much. Uh, the last two minutes, please, Steve Dixon. Uh, thank you, Janet Carney, and thank you, Townsville Enterprises. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a, a nexus in history. This is an opportunity for you to change the state for the better. One nation is throwing on the table our policies of which we've had out there since March this year. We've gone to a lot of trouble costing how we're going to deliver these outcomes, dropping energy by 20%. Abolishing the Cross River Rail project because it's not needed as yet. Infrastructure Australia said that. Spending that money in North Queensland, building dams and weirs. We are the party who have led the way. We've been followed by the two majors and we're going to deliver the most positive outcomes for this state. But the ball is in your hands. 
We're also supporting driver, and I've got to thank Pat Driscoll and Madonna Simmons. You've done a great job. Pulling hands have delivered $5 million in hard-earned dollars right here she got out of the federal government. We committed another 10 towards that project. Townsville is very dear to our hearts. We want to make sure that we deliver prosperity. We deliver economic prosperity for every single man, woman and child in this town. We want law and order to get back on track. These are things that have been neglected by the two major parties. They have absolutely lost their way and we will always put people before politics. We've demonstrated that by the Queensland guarantee that I signed yesterday. We will work with every member of parliament. We don't care which party they come from because we've got to put that to bed. It's not about us and them, it's about us, the people of Queensland, and we've forgotten that. Now's your chance on the 25th to change Queensland for the better. I like working with Robbie Catter, he's a bloody good fellow, and I'm sure that we can do a whole lot of good within the Queensland government. And Coxie, you're a good man, you've made a great deputy, and all the One Nation candidates get out there and hand those how to vote cards out and win the day. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. And Jenna Carty, you're a gem. She used to be on the Sunshine Coast. You're very lucky to have her. <laughs> thank you very much. Look, I'd just like to um, thank our candidates. Um, and before I hand over to, to Kevin Gill to do the vote of thanks, um, I'd just ask you to please give um, our three candidates a round of applause. And thanks. <laughs> Decisions uh, come Saturday. If not, fear not. We'll have the coverage of today's debate in tomorrow's Townsville Bulletin. We'll have an election special in Friday's Bulletin that will have how to vote, where to vote, everything you need to know uh, about your candidates before you vote. We'll have live coverage all weekend at www.townsvillebulletin.com.au and the results of full out in Monday's edition, please. As well. Uh, please welcome Kevin Gill to the stage for the vote of thanks. Thank you very much. Lynn, uh, Tim, Stephen, Robbie, it is uh, my pleasure to thank you for uh, coming today. Before I, I do that in a bit more detail, I hope I'm uh, now able to reflect on some of the, uh, the conversations you've had today. While I'm not marking you, I'm just trying to reflect perhaps on on how we felt about some of the things in the room. So we talked about rail, didn't we? And that is one of Townsville Enterprises' absolutely uh, critical infrastructure pieces. Uh, Patricia has been very strong on that. When you've got the world's most rich minerals province uh, right at the doorstep, how can you not invest in the rail? That's our view. Uh, in terms of the various uh, leaders, I must say, Robbie, you resonated uh, with us. Uh, you see it as a key platform but you haven't got any money on the table. Tim, you're the same. No money on the table. Steve, the same. Look, Labor has committed 50 million. While we can say that that's not enough, uh, that is a $50 million commitment and we do thank them for that. So uh, the challenge now is to uh, match them. You've got three days to do it. Good luck. Uh, the next item is power and that is really uh, an emotional issue now. I think it's gone beyond We've been saying for many years it's holding back business, but it's actually making families quite quite upset. It is an everyday conversation. It's up there with water. Uh, look, Tim, uh, your comment that you would write off uh, some of the gold plating uh, in these electricity companies really resonated with us. Uh, we've been saying that for a long time. It is, the, it is something we'll hold you to. And of course, uh, Halley Power, uh, the, the fire state, power fire station, Absolutely, we, we support that. Baseload is really what we support, and that seems to be uh, the logical solution. Uh, Robbie, you made a comment that yes, uh, we need to stop this government profiteering, get back to cost. Uh, we absolutely agree with that, that resonates. Robbie, Steve, you talked about a 20% reduction, and uh, that, that's a very good number. You also noted that uh, earlier, uh, that you do, do support governments owning and operating uh, these sort of infrastructure assets. But, in fact, this issue with power was a government issue, so we're a little confused on that one. Uh, on one hand, government ownership's good, on the other hand, they're a problem for this one, and this one matters right now. And Labor, of course, they're in, they're in a different space somewhat, they're in the renewable space. Look, it's hard to knock that in, in some ways, but will it deliver uh, real sustainable baseload power for industry? Uh, we think there's a plant for it, but uh, I think they, they can do more. So LNP and the Catter Party, I think you guys uh, resonated uh, with me in that regard. In terms of debt, 
Uh, debt was the big topic a few years ago. Uh, Tim, you referred to it as being a terrible a legacy. Uh, you didn't say too much more about that. Uh, you did have a plan last time, and let's not go there. Uh, Steve, you're very focused on uh, not selling assets. Uh, we understand that, we, we accept that. Robbie, you made a comment that good debt is okay. And I think, for me, I don't know what anyone else felt, but that did resonate, Robbie, so uh, yeah, good marks to you on that one. Uh, turning to Adani, the hot topic, and, and obviously we had, uh, we had our democracy in action there before, uh, briefly. Uh, you're, all, you're all committed to Adani, uh, we understand that. Uh, there's certainly some debate around how that, uh, that infrastructure, that rail infrastructure should be rolled out. Uh, Tim, you talked about it, uh, uh, certainly being supported through the current NAIF program and, and under a regulated asset base. Robbie, your comments really resonated with me in terms of while, while, a, uh, while it's all good and well, uh, there are some risks there when you've got one major proponent having essentially a strong controlling hand over it. And, and Steve, you were quite clear. You said, look, uh, we should have control of the asset. It should be in Australian hands. To me, that resonated the best. I think your messaging was clear in that regard. So uh, good on you there. Uh, in terms of uh, party deals, uh, that's the one that uh, keeps coming up. Uh, Robbie, you, you made a point about, uh, look, at the end of the day, uh, cross-party relationships, if they are managed maturely and strongly, are actually good for democracy. Uh, I have to say that resonated with me somewhat. Uh, I come from another country many years ago that uh, has lived in that environment, and uh, somehow they seem to make it work. Uh, uh, Steve, you were in a similar vein, uh, and, and I think that uh, resonated also with me. Tim, you were, you were generally clear. Uh, you're in it to win. You want to be a majority that can, and can have a clear mandate. Uh, you didn't make any commitments, and I'm sure that that issue will keep uh, coming along the way to you. Uh, in terms of uh, close and opening statements, uh, Tim, I thought your uh, opening statement that you see uh, Queensland as a state of opportunity, uh, and you made those statements recently uh, on Sky News. That, that continues to resonate, I think, for this group in particular. Uh, it was succinct, it was, it was clear. Uh, Robbie, uh, you come across as honest. Uh, you, your, your views may not always be agreed with, but we appreciate uh, your style. Steve, you're about change. You're about uh, the disaffection that, that is in the electorate. Uh, and, and you're going to hold us to account if uh, on, on the weekend uh, uh, things play your way. So that's how I saw it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure many of you saw it differently. Uh, look, at the end of the day, though, we do thank the three of you for making an effort at short notice. You had the guts to turn up. We know that uh, that issue is causing debate in terms of uh, we are short one major player. Uh, and so good on you for doing that. And I know that um, three days out, that's pretty tough to do. Uh, from our perspective, though, we do have to note that the Labor Party is before us. We've been through hell, basically, as you know, particularly after Clive Palmer's uh, stunt. Uh, they stood with us, uh, and, and more importantly, while the world hasn't changed, uh, we've had a respectful relationship with that government, and that's very important for us, to each of you. The message is, uh, if you're successful, if you treat us with respect, we have honest conversations, then we are going to work together, and that's really the key. That's all we want great outcomes for this region, okay? Let me say, finally, good luck to the three of you, okay? Uh, big night, uh, big week ahead, uh, big night Saturday. Uh, all the very best to you, all the very best to all candidates, in fact, uh, and thank you again for joining us at our Townsville Enterprise Townsville Bulletin Breakfast. Thank you. Final task is always uh, a bonus here uh, when you come along to a Townsville uh, Bulletin and Townsville Enterprise Breakfast, and that's 12 months membership. Is, is that correct, uh, Jessica? Let me draw that out. And the winner is uh, Russ Cook from the Townsville City Council. Well done, Russ. <laughs> that concludes the morning. Have a great day and rest of the week, everybody. Thanks. All right, Jenna,